important to you for as long as I have known you. What happened in the beginning? Oh, it's a typical enough story. A boy meets girl. Girl fulfills her ambition to transcend the physical plane and become a Valkyrie of Valhalla. One day, Sigrun quietly arrived from Fjordland and began serving as Freya's handmaiden while she undertook training for the Sisterhood. I don't even think we were introduced. I just see her around the court. Of course, I'd observed her loveliness and impressive stature, but long before we fell to talking. But we seemed cut from different cloth, I suppose. It never occurred to me we'd get along as well as we did. You and Sigrun, how was it you first spoke? Back when Freya was queen in Asgard, the better times, I mean, there really began to be some culture around the place. Poets, musicians, the odd contortionist would pay visits, perform, mingle. On one occasion, I'd taken a seat expecting to see this balladeer of the lowlands when Sigrun walked in. Somehow more stunning than I'd ever seen her. And when of all places she chose to sit next to me, well, a lot of very interesting things happened very quickly. But I may need to collect my thoughts while you get us killed again. Let us get back to your memories of Sigrun. She sat beside you. Yes, she chose to sit next to me. No big thing, really. Yet, somehow, despite myself, I felt her rush in my stomach like I was a green lad again. Embarrassing at the end of the day, to be so simple. I made some remark, and I learned how it felt to make her laugh. And suddenly I felt more at ease. Almost eerily so. A calm within each other's storms, I suppose. They had a way of describing that. Peace dwells among us. Lovely, brother. That's exactly right. Mumir, we speak more of coming to no Sigrun. Right. Where were we? After the ice was broken, we fell to talking more regularly, even making a point to do so. It was all I could do to enjoy our company responsibly, staying mindful of our respective positions and keep from crossing any line that would make things difficult for us to recover from. Hmm. Wise. Well, mostly. I'm always wisest in the parts I let myself remember. Mumir, what happened next with Sigrun? She had introduced me as a good friend. And though I couldn't be entirely sure what she meant by it, for once I wasn't concerned with an outcome. Regarding Sigrun, I knew my answer was yes. The question itself seemed secondary. You were not upset she called you friend. Show me someone for whom friendship means lack of love, and I'll show you someone who wonders why their lovers never end up being worth the time. Perhaps. But you did not express your feelings. Oh. I don't think she could have escaped noticing them. I just never asked her anything I felt sure she'd have to refuse. Your relationship with Sigmund. Why so reluctant to tell her how you felt? She was on the Valkyrie's path, preparing to transcend her corporeal form. That was her focus, her chosen purpose, and I didn't want to suggest myself as an obstacle. I suppose I let some part of myself imagine she might recognize my affection, even reciprocate it. But now that we know what she was running from, obviously she'd never again risk choosing love over duty. A unique heartfelt friendship, that is what could endure, and that is what I chose to embrace. Mimir, can you hear me? Has my voice broken through? Sigrun? Yes! Hello! How are you talking to... How long have you been able I to hear? I haven't been listening to you. There's just something I needed to tell you. 